Lower back pain is very common within cycling and more often than not, we just grin and bear it and accept that when we ride our bikes, we're gonna get a sore back. But you shouldn't be in pain with your back when you ride your bike. So today we've got our yoga expert along Vicky to show us some moves on how to prevent sore backs. So get your mats and join in. So today our expert Vicky is going to take us through a specific yoga session for cyclists with sore backs. Now this is something quite common we see in cyclists and I've suffered with a sore back on the bike as well. What, what causes that? Is it because, you know, we crouch down a lot on the bike? It's really, or? really common. It actually comes mostly from the glutes and the hamstrings. Mm. So these are our biggest muscle groups, the most powerful, the ones that we utilise the most. So with a lot of work, muscles become really short, really tight. Um, and that tends to pull on the muscles of the lower back. So it might not necessarily be tension in the back, it might be legs and oh, so it can, back to legs. Yeah, it's mm. not necessarily from the back. Not necessarily from, from the back, no. Mm. Lots mm. of other things, mm. right. Should we get started? Absolutely, yeah. So we're gonna to come to seated and we're gonna lie down on the back. So we're gonna begin with the soles of the feet to the mat and we're gonna come and lie down. So we're gonna take a moment just to take a nice deep breath in through the nose and a slow breath out through the nose. And you might like to rest the hands to the lower belly here. Another one, deep breath in through the nose. Slow breath out through the nose. We're gonna try and breathe in and out through the nose for the rest of the class if we can. Keep going, nice deep breaths in. This fullness of breath is what we wanna carry through the rest of the class. It's actually the breath that really helps us to release tension in the body. You'll notice as you exhale that sensation of releasing and relaxing. That's what we're gonna try and replicate in the poses today. So another breath in. And as you exhale, we're gonna let the knees just fall to the right hand side and reach the arms overhead. So here we're looking for a gentle tugging through the left side of the body, through the waist. This is gonna offer some space to the lower back here. So hopefully not too extreme to begin. Keep the breath full. Use the exhales nice and slow to ease and relax. Really nice. On your next in breath, we're going to take the knees back to the top, soles of the feet to the mat. And as you exhale, let the knees drop to the left. So again, gentle tugging through the right side of the body, through the waist here. Quite a lot of tension is commonly in the lower back across the sacrum there, so hopefully starting to feel some ease there. Each round of breath, try and take that inhale a little deeper. We're going to send the breath down into the belly. Exhaling slow. Beautiful. One more here. And then on your in-breath, knees to the top, soles of the feet to the mat. And you might like to hug the knees, so wrapping the arms around the knees, drawing the knees to the chest. If it feels okay, you might draw the forehead to the knees. So we're just a little stretch through the back and that forehead to the knees is gonna take that stretch through the back of the neck. And then we're gonna release. So we're gonna come back up to seated. We'll take hold of the backs of the thighs and then a little rock and roll forwards and back just as many times as you need. Oh to get, no, you aced it. <laughs> <laughs> if you need a few, take a few, just get a bit of momentum uh, to come uh, up to seated. Cool, so we're gonna um, either sweep the legs around the side or underneath you, whichever is most comfortable, to place your hands to the top of the mat. I'm gonna be on all fours here. We're gonna take classic yogi pose, downward facing dog to begin. Mm -hmm. So on your inhale, we're gonna tuck the toes and send the sit bones nice and high. So send the sit bones to the sky. And as you exhale, let the heels come down towards the floor. Your heels do not have to touch. So yeah. it's this upside down V shape. Heels are nowhere near the floor. That's but... all right, <laughs> that's all right. Now, if you're really tight in the backs of the legs, you can take a bend in the knees here and take as much bend as you need. Uh, we're looking for a stretch in the backs of the legs here. And you'll notice that you can still keep a stretch in the backs of the legs. You'll still get the hamstrings with bent knees, so they don't have to um, be straight. So a couple of full breaths here, keeping the stretch in the backs of the legs. So as you inhale, you might send the sit bones a little higher 
and then exhaling gently pressing the heels to the floor. We're also going to get some length in the spine here. So we're going to spread the fingers nice and wide and press the floor away so we can encourage the chest back towards the thighs and in doing that we're going to get a bit more length through the spine here. So having your feet flat on the floor is not our priority here. We're looking for a stretch in the backs of the legs, but we really want um, some length in the spine here. So if we can, madam, we're going to tilt the sit bones a little bit more there. Lovely. Take oh, a little yeah. bit more bend in the knees, and then we can gently press the chest to the thighs. Really nice. So we've got much more length in the spine there. That's exactly what we want. A couple of full breaths. It's really hard to carry on breathing. Yeah. This is where we really start to learn how to manipulate the breath. Deep in through the nose slow out through the nose and this is going to be super beneficial on the bike as well when you're working really hard you'll notice that you can calm your heart rate with breath and we can change the sensations in the body so we can ease the tension with this slow rhythm of breath we'll take one more here and then as in as many steps as you need we're going to walk the feet towards the top of the mat and we're going to take the feet about hip width and then we're just going to hang heavy in a fold. So your fingertips might come to the floor, they might not. They might be hanging in the air and that's quite all right. Again, as much bend in the knees as you need to be comfortable. We are feeling the length in the backs of the legs here, but it's um, hopefully a little more passive. What we're really focusing on here is length in the spine. So you're actually, your spine is longer here than when you're stood upright. So we're offering some space between each of the vertebrae. So breathing deeply, we're using the exhales to release some of that tension. You might be feeling it mid-back. If you spend a lot of time at a desk as well as, as, well as riding a lot, then you're definitely going to feel some tightness through mid-back perhaps. So let the head hang heavy, let it go so that you're not adding extra tension in the head or the neck. You might like to nod the head yes, shake the head no. Using every out breath to really try and let go. Maybe you get to hang a little more heavy. You might notice a bit more space between the vertebrae, really nice. Beautiful, one more deep inhale. Slow exhale. Beautiful, we're gonna take the hands down to the mat. So as much bend in the knees as you need to place the hands on the mat. And we're gonna take the knees down to the mat and we're gonna take a child's pose. So uh, we're gonna take the knees as wide as is comfortable. We're gonna open into the hips a little way here. So toes together, knees wide. And then we're gonna press the butt back towards the heels. Your butt might touch the heels, it might not. That's quite all right. And then we're gonna to start to reach the arms forwards. So moving gently. You might find that you get to a place and you're kind of stuck there and that's enough, that's quite all right. If the forehead comes down towards the floor, then we'll take it down. If it doesn't quite meet the floor, then you might use a block or a cushion or something underneath the forehead. Manon's doing really well. So full breaths here as well. We're opening into the hips a little bit here. So we're gonna be focusing on the back of the body basically, but hips, glutes, all of this connected um, fascia between these big muscle groups um, could all do with easing. So we'll breathe deeply here for a few. And you might notice as you inhale, you get this feeling of an ex some expansion in the back body. And as you exhale, we're gonna try and find that sensation of releasing and relaxing. You might notice a bit more space in the hips. Maybe you just get to release a bit of that tension through the back. And know that there's no way you're supposed to go, there's no shape that you are supposed to make. Uh, as long as you are feeling into the area of the body that I am suggesting, then we're in it. There's no where this is supposed to go, there's no end destination or shape that you're supposed to make. Beautiful, one more deep inhale. Slow exhale. Really nice, so from child's pose then we're gonna come up. We're coming back to downward facing dog, so hands to the mat. We're gonna take the knees back into parallel on your in breath, tuck the toes, sit bones are nice and high. And as you exhale, gently lower the heels towards the mat again. A couple of full breaths here. So we're getting to revisit this stretch through the backs of the legs. You might take bends in the knees again. 
And as we revisit these, you might notice that maybe you need a little less bend in the knees. It does feel a little bit better. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So really pressing the floor away so you've got that length in the spine. Sit bones nice and high. Deep inhales. And then using the exhales to gently press the heels towards the floor. And we're looking for a sensation that you can manage with your breath. So if the sensations are really extreme and your breath becomes short, that's your indicator that you've gone a bit too far for today. So we want to always be in a place where we can keep the breath long. One more here. And then on your next inhale, we're going to step the right foot forwards between the hands. If it doesn't make it all the way, you might just pick it up and pop it down. I'm going to drop the back knee. And then you're going to shift the weight. Your hips are going to come back to that left heel. So we stretch this right leg out in front and flex the foot. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, bit of tightness. Tight there. So this is where we might find that blocks are really helpful. So you might pop one palm on each block. If we find ourselves in a position that's too, that's tight, then it might just mean that we need to bring the floor to us. Yeah, that's so definitely helps. Right leg is out long. We're going to flex that foot so we get into the calf as well. So we're going to take a deep breath in, lift the top of the head away, away from your tailbone so we're long in the spine. And then as you exhale, we're going to fold over this right leg. And you might not come far, just come deep enough to find that stretch in the back of the right leg. If you look down towards the floor, you're going to encourage some length in the back of the neck and we're not going to add in extra tension through the neck and the shoulders. And we slow the breath. If you shift your weight forwards a little bit, Manon, so that your um, hip is over this knee and you might untuck the back toes there, might be a bit more comfortable. Can sit down more on it. No, so if you come up, so you see that my oh, um, hip is over my knee. Yeah. So you might pop the blocks up on a higher one. If you put your palms to the blocks, it might just feel more stable. So you want to be in a place that feels comfortable yeah, that so that you can really better. focus on the target area, which is the back yeah. of the leg. Right leg, hamstring, calf. The more you flex that right foot, the deeper you're going to get into yeah. the calf. It's that little movement in the foot which yeah. makes such a difference. Mm. You really feel it. Yeah. Two more deep breaths. Last one here. Really nice. You can release the blocks. We're going to shift the weight forwards. The sole of that right foot is going to come to the mat. I'm going to take the hands inside of the right foot. So you're on the back knee still. You might take this uh, right foot a little wider. So we're going to get into the right hip here. So <clears throat> on your inhale, you're going to sink the hips forwards and lift the chest. So we're opening the chest and the hips sink forwards. Really nice. You might find, Manon is doing really well here, but you might find that your knees are a bit more of a, you've got more of a 90 degree angle here. And in which case you definitely need to bring the floor to you and pop your hands on some blocks. If you get your hands down, you can start sinking the hips forwards a little more deeply, find that right hip. And it might mean that turning the right toes out a little way might be helpful to find that space. You might even come onto the outside edge of that right foot. So we all have very different skeletons. The way that our bones are in our sockets are different for all of us. So um, we each might have to do something a little different to find that space. Really nice. Two more here. Last one. As you inhale, lift the chest, sink the hips. Beautiful. So we're going to tuck the back toes. You're going to step this right foot back. We're coming back to downward facing dog. Inhale, hips are high, seat bones high. Exhale, press the heels to the mat. Take a full breath in your down dog. And then we're going to come to the left side. So on your in breath, left foot steps forwards between the hands. Give it some help if it doesn't make it all the way. Drop the right knee. Send the hips back to that right heel, flex the left foot. Using those blocks under the palms, if you need to raise the floor a little, we want to keep the chest open. Stretch in the back of that left leg. The more you flex the foot, the deeper you're going to get into the calf. So as long as you've got the stretch in the back of this left leg, we're in it. I've got it. <laughs> 
slow the breath down. Notice when you arrive in a pose, sometimes, particularly if it's tight, your breath is automatically really short. And day to day, our breath is really short. I mean, it's not often that we check in and notice our breath during the day. Most people breathe really shallow breath just in the chest. So when we're practicing here, we wanna really take that fuller breath. So on your inhale, we take it down into the belly really expanding the belly, then it comes up into the lungs and then full up into the chest. So that deeper rhythm of breath is gonna help us use the exhales nice and slow to find that ease and to soften and relax into the pose a bit more. You can definitely feel the more breaths you do in this position, the more you like sink mm. into it and it gets a bit easier more comfortable. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it's the breath that changes the way that it feels. So yeah. if you're tight in the body, more breath. The stronger the sensation, more breath. We'll take two more here. The last one. Really nice. Shifting weight forwards then, so all of that left foot comes to the mat and the hands are going to come inside the left foot for our lizard pose and we're going to take that left foot out to the side. So again, if um, you at home need blocks and need to come up a little higher here, quite all right to do that. Manon's got hands to the floor quite quite comfortably. <laughs> yeah, this is the, one of the best, yeah. better ones. <laughs> yeah. So on your inhale, we're going to lift the chest, open the chest, shoulders come back, let the hips sink. Find that space into the left hip. Untucking back toes might be more comfortable, it's up to you. Really using those exhales to sink the hips. And notice where there's tightness and there's resistance. using the exhales, doing our very best to let it go. If it felt good the other side to so maybe turn the toes out to the side a little way, if that gives you a bit more access to the hip, it's entirely up to you. Toes straight forwards, so you might already be there, it might be enough, but you might find toes out to the side offers a bit more space. One more here, deep breath in. Slow breath out. Beautiful, we're going to tuck the back toes, we're coming back to downward facing dog. Take an inhale to step that left foot back, exhale downward dog. So we're going to check back in with the hamstrings and the calves here. A couple of full breaths in your downward facing dog and see if backs of legs are feeling any different. Really nice, and the sit bones nice and high as you inhale. Gently pressing heels down, exhale, really nice. We're gonna step through to seated, so you can step forwards to the middle of your mat and just sit the bum down. And then we're gonna to come to lying on the back. So we're gonna take a couple of stretches for the glutes here. So on your back, you're gonna keep the sole of the left foot to the mat. We're gonna lift the right um, foot and take the ankle to the top, on top of the left thigh here. So a couple of options here. We're gonna send the right hand through that hole um, in the legs. You might take hold of the back of the left thigh. You might find it's possible to interlace the fingers or take hold of the front of the left shin. So whichever feels most accessible. So take a breath here. We're looking for the stretch in your right butt here. So this might be plenty and it might mean that you just have to focus on relaxing those out breaths and easing that sensation into the right butt. If you want to deepen the sensation here, we're going to send this right knee away from us. That's going to make it a little more juicy. And remember when there's strong sensation, we need more breath, slow it down. You might find it's possible to gently encourage that left thigh towards your body. Really nice, slow breath. We'll take two more here. Last one. Nice, releasing the hands then. Let that left foot come down to the mat. Take the right foot away. Just taking a moment to notice how right and left butt might feel different and we'll take it to the other side. So your uh, left ankle on top of your right thigh, reaching the left hand through. So either grabbing back of left thigh, 
sorry, your right thigh, or reaching in front of the right shin. And right and left side might be different. If you're more dominant on one side of the body, that's really common. This side definitely feels a little bit tighter. Just a tighter, yeah. yeah. So you might be stronger in your left leg, perhaps. There's quite often um, an imbalance of power. That's quite a normal thing, isn't it? Yeah. And that's okay. We work with what we've got. And it's really important just to notice the sensations you have in your body in this moment. So you might find that next time you visit the mat, you feel differently. Um, there might be tension in other places. You might be more open in some spaces where you weren't. So it's really important just to address what's happening right now and to take the versions of the poses that best suit what you feel in the moment. So if it's possible, we might send that left knee away from us a little bit. And remember, if you are handling the sensation you have right now and it's enough, just be there, breathe. Two more here. Last one. Really nice, right foot comes down, then we're gonna unhook that left foot, both feet to the mat. Okay, our last pose, we're gonna take a happy baby. So this one's good for the lower back and into the hips. You're gonna send the soles of the feet to the sky, reach the arms inside of the thighs. And we're gonna try and take outside edges of the feet here. So it's really important that the lower back stays in contact with the floor. So we're gonna press the lower back down. If that means that you actually can't keep hold of the feet, that's okay, you can take the ankles or the shins. The idea is to gently encourage the knees either side of the body down towards the floor so we find that space in the hips and across the lower back. Breath is nice and deep. It may be quite helpful if you do take hold of the ankles or the shins, you can then take the knees a little wider, so that might offer you a bit more space. Really nice, one more here, deep inhale, slow exhale. And then releasing the legs, send them out long in front. And so at the end, I always recommend that you just take a moment to lie still. Notice any change in sensations in the body. The rest at the end of a yoga class is the most powerful element of the practice. All of your hard work gets to nourish your body and we get to notice this shift of energy. So you might have sensation in the body where you've eased some tension, you feel a little lighter, a little more open. Whew. You don't actually realise how tight you are in those specific areas until you actually get in those Absolutely. poses. I'm surprised. My hamstrings are quite quite tight. But that was great. Thank you, you did so really much. Well. Yeah. Oh, thank mm. you so much Pleasure. for taking us through the session. And thank you, you guys, for following along at home. If you did enjoy this video, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And stay tuned as we'll have more yoga videos coming very soon.